Welcome back everyone to another episode of All About Mechanics. Today is going to be the Dread Cellar. Now this is one of the very recent dungeons actually from the Flames of Ambition and this is the last one in the series pending further content. So of course there's a couple of trials left over but all the dungeons and arenas are now done. Now this particular dungeon is going to be the same as every other dungeon guide that I've done. We're going to have one tank, one healer, one stamina DPS and one magicka DPS. Of course you can play how you like but the traditional roles for the game of what people expect are all covered so no matter what you do there is a place for you. Now we're obviously going to show all the secrets and stuff but we're going to also go through all the trash pulls as well and tell you what you should and shouldn't prioritize especially from a tank's perspective. So this particular fight here, this is a tank killer. Grab Jeff, turn him away from the group and be very, very careful. The amount of damage you can take all at once usually wipes the tank on the first pull. So be very careful with that. Get your heals in nice and quick. Yes, of course, we killed those quite quickly. Doesn't matter how long it takes you. Just make sure they're not facing the group. Just be aware, of course, the archers and such do need to be interrupted if they start channeling because they can hurt. There's going to be multiple pulls like this before we get to the first secret boss. But they're all basically the same kind of structure. It's going to be some nastiness. You grab the big ones, then grab the small ones after if you can. Or vice versa, whichever your tank is feeling like. And make sure they are turned away from the group. This Colossus guy here, just the same as Maelstrom. When he starts channeling, there's going to be meteors or fire on the ground. That he'll fire up into the air and they'll land on you. Just move around and don't get caught. If you get hit, it's not going to kill you as such. But a couple of them might cause you a bit of a problem. The Ogrim, of course, turn him around again. Standard stuff here. Turn the big stuff away from the group. Grab the small stuff afterwards. It's about order of priority. Generally, the big stuff usually one-shots a DPS. And the small stuff, while people don't necessarily see them as a threat, usually do a lot of damage. So you do have to make sure that you pay attention, especially in this dungeon, to the scamps. They really hurt. This pool can be quite tricky. You've got lots of different enemies in here. Make sure you get rid of those scamps nice and quick. But above all, watch these Zivkin dudes. They have some nasty mechanics. They can channel some very heavy um, damage and attacks. And you've also got bone clauses at the same time. So if you can stack them up, that really, really helps. But be aware, of course, if he starts channeling, you are going to have to move around the room. The Zivkins need to be controlled. They mustn't run loose on the group. But if they do start channeling, again, interrupt them. Otherwise, you're going to die. That's a very tricky pull for most tanks. The trick is to grab the ranged targets first and try and manipulate them so they sit in the middle of the room. Now we're going to show the secrets. So this needs two people. There are two flames in the room, one either side. I've got one. Bob's picked up the other one. And then we run over here to the west so we can go and drop them in these kind of candle holder um, things. You just activate a synergy. You've got 25 seconds to run with that flame. If it runs out, you have to go back and get it. So make sure you coordinate and both do it at the same time. Once you've done that, there's two crystals. Now you'll notice here that the crystals are actually orange. That's very important because it um, represents the boss you're actually going to activate and or use, which will make sense in a moment. So basically you need two people to activate this particular portal. So one is in the corner, in the distance over there, and one is over here. So if you press them both at the same time, surprise, surprise, something will happen. But of course you need to coordinate. I can't tell you how many times in a pug this has taken a long amount of time because people didn't press the button at the same time. It doesn't have to be exactly the same time, but quite close. Once you're in here, these will light up just like the last ones you saw for the secret. You activate them to pick them up. You'll see a synergy effect. There you go, that there. Now remember we had the orange crystal, so you're looking for the orange crystal. Put your flame in the candle holder and then wait. Once this rather long script has finished, you can basically look at the crystal and activate it. If you do so, the boss will enter the room. Now, the trick to this particular boss is your positioning. As you can see there, the two DPS and the healers are kind of in a triangle formation opposite the tank. We are doing that on purpose. We're not just standing there to look cool. That is done on purpose because we want to make sure that we're spread out. If you stack, there's going to be meteor effects that will come down. And if you've got multiples of them, you will die. If you're unlucky, you'll die to one, let alone two. So stay away from each other as much as possible. Basically, turn it away from the group as the tank, block the heavy attacks, and hold it still. If the flame atros come into the room, yes, of course, you can taunt them, or you can stack the boss on them. It's entirely up to you as a group which tactic you apply, but make sure, of course, you do aggro them at least. You saw the meteors coming down there. As you can see, we block them, but you can, of course, get out of them. Same again, move it to an ad if you really want to. Or if you're feeling brave, you can just go full health level on the boss and ignore the ads. But again, as a tank, you want to make sure you at least range taunt them so they don't pepper the group with fireballs. Again, the meteors come down, dodge roll or walk out of it or simply block it, but be very careful, they do hit hard. 
In the meantime, there are fire pops that appear under the ground. They're due to the Atronarchs around the room. Just keep out of them. The easiest way to apply yourself in this one is basically don't stack on your friends. You can move the boss, you can keep the boss still, the choice is yours, but don't stack on people's heads because you will kill them. Now that we've got that secret, we've got a buff. So we've actually increased our weapon and spell damage, which is quite handy. And of course, we can bring that boss into the room now. In boss fights, look for that orange crystal. If you see it, you can activate it from a very long distance away just by looking at it and hitting the button and you can bring him into the fight for a whole minute. If you do that, you will actually help your group by adding a synergy in the room, which will basically damage targets around you that will hurt the adds, it will hurt the boss. It's quite handy. And of course, if you activate it when people are dead, on a cooldown of course, you can only do it once per uh, special boss, you can actually res people that are dead. Now also, if you light attack, heavy attack or bash, you will increase extra damage to the targets that they receive from that boss buff but i mean just bring him in the room he'll kill stuff always take the synergy now we are going to press the hard mode for this of course as you just saw but the hard mode is not that much different it's got more health yes but it's also got a few more adds apart from that the basic mechanics are pretty much the same turn it away from the group at all times as a tank and we've stayed in the rather triangular type formation behind the boss most of the time if we can help it to stay out of each other's way just in case we get aoe's on us in the meantime, during health percentages, the boss will drop adds in the room. This dude needs to be interrupted, otherwise he casts lightning storms. And you'll get a Bone Colossus as well. Bone Colossus, Daedra, um, enemies of any kind when it comes to uh, Jeffs, Daedroffs and stuff like that. Those are not in the regular version. The only ones that are are these Zivkin guys, these big ones. In the regular version, you'll just get those. But obviously, we've got extra stuff to deal with because we pressed the hard mode. So just be sure that you deal with the adds all the time. Make sure you always prioritize the ads. If you want to make it simple for yourself, prioritize the ads. Yes, the boss will disappear and teleport and this big um, pillar or totem will appear, which you do have to get rid of because if you don't, it's going to keep channeling and it's going to hurt the group. As you can see there, those are red goo has been flown around the room and it keeps damaging us every second. Get rid of that and that mechanic is gone. In the meantime, as you can see, we are on the ads. Get rid of those. The tank has to taunt them because otherwise they will wreck the group but make sure you kill them over the boss. Obviously, the boss is channeling there. You can see some nasty area of effect abilities being spewed out from underneath him. You can step back a bit and weave in and out of those, or you can take some big, big heals if you can supply them, and you'll be okay. But for the most part, you don't want to get caught. As you can see there, the boss pulled in one random player, and the boss needs to be interrupted. Otherwise, it will kill the player. That's really, really bad. You have to be very, very careful with that. Didn't have uh, all of our shiny heals at the back there, and someone died, but rip. Now... Again, you have to make sure you prioritize the ads. Interrupt mechanic again. If you don't, you are going to get overwhelmed. The quicker you kill the boss, the faster the ads spawn in the room. So as soon as you see them, make it easy for yourself and get rid of them. Now, we haven't actually introduced the secret boss yet, but if you can see on the other side of the room behind the ad, there is a crystal. That's the, the gold or orange crystal, whichever you want to call it. That is how you bring the boss into the room, but you want to use it at an opportune moment. It only lasts a minute. So you want to make sure that if you're at the end of the fight, or you're struggling with a load of ads, you take advantage of that. It's very easy to forget you've actually got it. Now, the boss is on the other side of the room. Again, every time he teleports, you want to go straight for that totem and get rid of it. Big heals and the tank on the way needs to bring the ads with them. Again, I can't stress this enough. You must kill those ads. Apart from that, the mechanics are pretty much rinse repeat. Apart from one more, just one more tiny mechanic, which does hit quite hard. And that's this one. The boss will kind of spread a big... AoE burst. Now that came from the ad, but the boss will do that also, as you can see here. Big suck in mechanic, then you've got a dodge roll out. If you don't, you'll take quite a lot of damage, so just be very, very careful. If you've got big heals, you can actually survive it, but with this stacking on top, it's quite nasty. So you may want to bring some barriers. It's a big pull in and then burst. That happens at low health and then continues throughout the rest of the fight. Now, of course, nothing else really changes now. You've got these channeled effects, which basically looks like a constant bite on the tank. You've got these pull-in mechanics for one member in the group that you have to interrupt, otherwise they will die. And you've got ads. Always kill the ads. I know it's probably boring that I keep repeating that, but I can't, I can't make it any more obvious. Watch the stuff on the ground. Prioritize the ads over the boss. 
Yes, of course, if you've got loads and loads of damage, you can kill the boss faster, but you're also going to bring the adds in quicker too, which means messy times. So Daedroths and Colossus overall, but the Zivkins must be killed. Make sure, above all, because tanks get lazy sometimes, make sure, above all, that the tank is controlling the aggro. Don't assume that people are going to be okay with the adds running around the room because you've got the boss. They won't. They will die. Now, from here on, you can, of course, go hell for leather to finish the boss. You can bring the ad into the room if you want, and it will help you. But don't forget your basics. If you start doing stupid things just because the health is low, aka execute panic, you won't make it easy on yourself. You'll actually make it worse. So don't do stupid stuff just because the health is low. On my live streams, I try to educate people about this all the time. It's really, really stressful to watch people just panic for no good reason and kill everyone just because it's low. That is your most crucial time. If you can do 100% to 90%, you can do 10% to 0%. Now, just for the sake of the video, we are activating the buff now, as you can see. Big man is in the room. He's going straight for the ads. He will always prioritize the ads, as you should be, and he has a synergy with him. If you activate the synergy, big meteors come down and everybody goes boom. That is very, very helpful. Again, he's gone straight across the room, straight for that totem. He knows what the priority targets are. So it makes things a lot, lot easier, especially with him in the room, because he will help you kill stuff. Yes, of course, you can burn the boss now if you want to, but look at what he is doing. He is making things so much easier. And, of course, you've got buffs as well for having the boss uh, bonus, don't forget. So, from here, there's nothing else to say, really. You kill him. If there's an ad, kill it. If there isn't an ad, hit the boss. Interrupt the boss if he pulls you in. Get out if you all get pulled in. Easy peasy. Now, that can look very, very stressful, but it is a bit of an endurance match. It's... Repeat, 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 repeat until it's dead. Some mechanics in some dungeons can escalate quite heavily and get worse and worse with lots of additional things added on top. This one is not one of them. What you see from the beginning of the fight is what you get for the rest of it. Obviously, non-hard mode is easier because there aren't ads in the room and it has less health. It doesn't hit quite so hard either. But a little bit of practice and you'll get it. The amount of damage that ad that you summon into the room actually puts out is a bit of a game changer. So even if you've got very low DPS, you can still kill the boss anyway. It really doesn't matter. But he does help a lot. On any boss fight, you want to bring those guys in because they make a huge difference. Now, as you can see here, we've got a bit of a new mechanic. See this red stuff along the floor? Yes, red is dead. That will kill you. So be very aware of that. Zos tends to give you breadcrumb mechanics, and what I mean by that is they tend to show you something important that is going to be very relevant later, and that's no different. You are going to see that on a boss fight. You don't want to stand in it. These here, quite simple. Turn them away from the group, otherwise they will stun people. There has been a bug on this uh, live servers recently where if you get stunned by them at the same time as you're trying to do a dodge roll, you get stuck in infinite break free. Don't worry, that's going to be fixed, but if that happens, you need to reload your game. Doesn't happen all the time. Nine times out of ten, you don't see it, but just in case. Technically, if you get caught by those, you're standing in the wrong place anyway, unless you're the tank. And if you're the tank, you should probably be blocking it because, let's face it, you're chunky. You can take it. Now, there are going to be more of those, of course. You want to make sure you follow the same rules each time. You want to make sure that you always turn them away from the group. Simple rule of thumb for the tank anyway. Turn stuff away. This pull is a wipe fest for pugs. So be very aware of what's going on here. You've got these kind of towers almost really small towers that pump out that red stuff backwards and forwards don't stand in it only go past it when it's clear make sure you stack everything against the door if you can if not just hold it out of the way of the red stuff lots of tanks try to hold it still next to the red stuff they get caught by a tick or so of that plus hit by the spider they're screwed so be very very careful that made it look a lot lot easier than it is but essentially grab everything and pull it away from that part of the room doesn't matter how much deeps you have doesn't matter whether you're very, very new, with no champion points, whatever. It doesn't matter, but the priority there is to get them away from the red stuff. You can take as long as you like, but make sure you are clean. Now, of course, these you've seen already. Watch the clan fears. They jump and stun you if you're too far away. Also, the hunger will spit in front of you, um, in front of the tank. So don't stand there, or it will aim at you if the tank hasn't taunted it. Either way, don't get caught. If you do get caught, block it. This pull also... Um, 
is a bit of a killer. So there is some red stuff on the left-hand side underneath that spider, as you can see. Most tanks run into that and grab the spider. Don't do that. You will die. Grab them all together. Hold them still. Turn them away from the group. Standard stuff from a tank's perspective. Healer, obviously, make sure you keep up those big heals and the DPS stand behind everything. If you try and stand here, you will die. These can be one shot from range if you apply yourself on them, but as soon as they zap you, then you have to kill them properly. They will snare you. That's very important. Again, another breadcrumb mechanic for the next boss. Be very aware that these have low health, but if you don't kill them, they will cause you a problem. And what we're going to do here is we're going to see the second secret. As you can see here, we have to go through the door and break the lock. Yes, you need lots of lock picks in this dungeon. Inside there is the next secret, but we've got to go get the flames again like last time. But unlike last time, there are now three instead of four. So if you're in here as a duo, you won't be able to do the secret. You need a minimum of three people. Get your fastest runner to go for the furthest one away. And then everybody else, the other two, stand on their flames and don't press it. You have a 25 second timer. You want to make sure you all get there at the same time. The person that's standing here needs to activate it and then run. The trick then is for people to pick theirs up when you run past them. That way everyone's going to get there at the same time and you shouldn't have any issues with overlap or timers falling off. So be very careful with that. So as you can see here, I'm legging it straight through up and over the ramp. There's one flame to my left and there's one flame to my right. Those two people have just picked theirs up and they're going to follow me into the secret. This is a very simple coordination trick and it works very, very well. But if you try to be that one person that picks theirs up and runs, picks it up and runs, you're going to overlap your messed up timers and it's not going to work. You're going to be there till Christmas. In we go. Same as before, but this time it's blue crystals. So what you need to do, of course, after picking up the heavy sack, is go down and find the three blue crystals. Just bear in mind, by the way, if you are looking for heavy sacks, chests, and all that good stuff because you're looking for gear, they can be in the secrets as well. So if you don't do the secrets, you're missing out on some of your loot. Three crystals here, one either side of the room and one in the corner, and all we have to do is press them all at the same time. Magic! There's a portal. Yes, you may have guessed it. Since we're using the blue crystals, we need to look for the blue crystal when we pick up the synergy for the flame. Much like the last boss. Last one was orange. This one is blue. So run over, pick up your flame from the candle holder, then run to the other side of the room where the blue crystal is and deposit it either side. Again, you've got 25 seconds to do this. If you don't, it will reset and then you're screwed. You have to do it again. Now, not the end of the world, but it's annoying. This boss, the same way to spawn the last one. You look at the crystal and activate it once the NPC has finished talking. This one is a lot simpler than the last one because you don't tend to have too much in the way of meteors landing on your head. But there's some rather nasty large AoEs that you do have to avoid. As you can see, we're in the same position as last time. Triangle formation behind the boss as the healer and DPS. You can stand still and nuke it if you want to. But you are going to have to watch your feet. However... What the tank needs to do is make sure they at least taunt the adds around the room. So if you are unsure of your group and you don't have enough survivability or lots and lots of damage to be able to go through the mechanics before anything gets really stressful, then of course prioritize the adds like we just did there. Not a problem. Kill the adds, come back to the boss. Kill the adds, come back to the boss. Make it simple for yourself. You don't have to be a YOLOer and show off. You could just play the mechanics and make it nice and clean. Speedrun's not that aggressive anyway, so you've got plenty of time. But, for the most part, basically stand behind the boss. Stay out of the small pools that you can see in the room. But he will do a rather large, big, spreading out AoE effect that you do need to avoid. In the meantime, of course, you also have to watch out for the Lich Crystals. As you can see, he's not really moving. There's nothing really going on. Just watch your feet. Most of the fight, you can actually stand still. There's the big boom. Watch that. Don't stand in it. A couple of seconds after, it will go away. So, stand still. Hit the boss. Move backwards. Stand still, hit the boss, move backwards again if you have to. Adds boss, as boss, or just kill the boss and make sure the tank has got taunts on everything. If it's a really chunky tank, you shouldn't have any issues there anyway. If they're not so chunky, make it easy on yourself and just do the mechanics. You don't have to, to show off all the time. You can just pace it. Now, we've got one more boss left, but we do also have a secret boss. This particular secret that we just did, by the way, uh, has a very cool effect. The boss will spawn lich crystals under enemies especially scamps and just blow them up also it will help uh siphon health from the enemies and heal the group and of course one more major factor you do actually get a recovery bonus for having the buff for completing that boss which is really really handy now this boss is simpler than it looks 
but harder to perform than you might think. So you've got two Atros in the room that you need to get rid of. Otherwise, they'll start channeling and loads of lightning will go around the room. You've got the boss in the middle that has some fairly light basic attacks, but his heavy attack will hit really, really hard. So the tank needs to make sure that they block that. Or if you're feeling really scared, you can actually dodge roll it. But you see all these tracks on the floor? Those are going to be red is dead stuff. That's freaking dangerous. So what you need to do, much like the walls in Fang Lair, is walk around them. Avoid them. Don't get caught. In the meantime, the boss will cast some lightning stuff on the ground, and also it will channel two lightning effects at the group, which you need to place on the ground. Also, you've got all these nasty tiny ads that you have to get rid of because they snare you. What's not good about snare? Well, basically these red walls that you need to walk around, it's no good if you're slower, is it? So again, as the same with most mechanics, kill the ads. Now he will cast out some lightning winds. They don't hit that hard, but if you're low health, obviously it's going to affect you. Just be careful and keep your heals up. You will see two people get channeled with a lightning effect shortly, but at the moment we haven't had that. So it's, it's luck of the draw. Most of the effects are due to the Atronarchs anyway, so if you get rid of them, then of course you alleviate that particular situation and or mechanic. But of course, if you do kill them, they're going to come back in anyway. So really, all you want to do is make sure you just keep on their interrupts. One mechanic, which is a friggin' wipe fest, is right now. He's channeling with a big red beam on his head. Nice and simple, there's going to be some skeletons in the room that needs to die, but as you can see there, I glow red. If you glow red, you need to do one of two things. Block or dodge roll. If you do not block or dodge roll those skulls, you are dead. They are really, really evil. You'll get about two or three per person. And of course, it's really, really tricky to survive if you're not actively paying attention to it. It's totally up to you which one of the two you do. It depends on the character, depends on the player, depends on the build. If you can dodge roll, then great. You'll avoid all damage. If you block, obviously, then you'll mitigate a rather large amount of it. But either way, we have found people die even if they are using damage shields. So make sure you are using your mitigation bonuses. Resistances, even ultimates that protect your group, bring whatever you can. You'll get two or three per person, and then the, the mechanics will rotate. They'll keep doing the same stuff over and over and over. Watch the walls, kill the ads, hit the boss. It's a very mobile fight, but as you can see, the tank can keep the boss in the room most of the time. As long as you keep him taunted and just wiggle around him in a circle, he doesn't really move that much. But what we're going to do, obviously, is uh, we're going to add some extra spice to this. Because while the fight doesn't really change, you can get some extra help. So you've got the gold crystal or orange crystal on the back there, which you look at and hit the button. In comes Flamey McFlame Face. Now he has a synergy which will help nuke the adds. He'll always prioritize the adds as well. And of course, then he'll hit the boss. Watch for this phase. Again, the boss is channeling. Make sure you're blocking or dodging those skulls. Yes, it's very dramatic. There's lots of stuff going on. But once you understand each individual mechanic, which is only like two or three major ones, so the walls, the channels, and the split up with the lightning, the rest isn't too bad. The adds, you do, again, need to interrupt, otherwise constant wins. But look at that dude at the back. He's just kicking their faces in left, right, and center. Also, as you can see, the ad that helps us with the story is putting up some walls, which will stop all the nasty red stuff in certain tracks. So pay attention to those. That gives you a free space to stand in. Now, of course, you can bring in the other ad as well if the fight is still continuing and you haven't killed the boss yet. And he will help kill ads also, but he will also help you heal. And, of course, if he comes in, just like the fire boss, if somebody dies and you activate the synergy, this only happens once, by the way, while they're present, you can res all the bodies on the floor. So you can activate the synergy multiple times during their presence, but you can, of course, use a res once. And that is the dude there. We have obviously overburned a little bit, but if you have low DPS, it doesn't matter. You can still go through the motions. There's no actual DPS check in this fight, but each boss ad that you bring in for you will be in the room for one whole minute and even if you have got low dps as a group they actually do a hell of a lot of damage so it feels like you are nuking it anyway practice makes perfect on that boss too many deaths can become a problem even though you've got effectively two group reses in there for free but just watch your feet ads need to be interrupted you don't want to stand in the red stuff and when he's channeling above all that's the biggest mechanic when he's channeling that red stuff, if you have a glowing red aura, you need to block or dodge roll. Whichever one your character can handle easier. If you're stand DPS, you might want to dodge. If you're anything else, you might want to block it. But do not drop your resistances because you will die, block or not. This pull is very simple. Stack them all up, knock them all down, watch your feet. But beware, there is a Jeff around the corner and there's a nasty two-hander which will sometimes go loose and start smacking people. Make sure that's taunted. 
So as you go around this corner here, we're approaching the last secret, by the way. As you go around this corner, you've got Jeff. Some people like to try and stack all this up all at once, but let's face it, most of the time it's a mess because people assume that they can aggro in certain ways that they can't, and everything runs around in circles. Take it in two pulls. It's nice and easy. Turn him away from the group. Don't set fire to your friends. And if that happens, make sure you've got big heals because he hurts. Now, this is where your lockpicks come in because you need lots and lots of lockpicks in this particular dungeon to open all the doors. There are many doors around the room, one for each flame. And in the meantime, failed lockpick, good job. In the meantime, there is also one that has the secret door in it. Now, this particular one needs four people, not three. You do want to kill this. As you saw in the first boss, generally the spider is to do with this, so stuff comes through. The assumption is that this actually affects the last boss. Whether that is or isn't the case, I mean, you can put that in the comment section below if you think it is. But regardless, just get rid of it. If you don't want it to be a problem, you don't want to find out what it does, just kill it. And now to the actual mechanics. So basically here, everyone needs to be standing near, near, not pressing it, near a flame. So, once everyone's got their position, coordinate. This particular mechanic has taken me as long as 20 minutes in a pug because someone always picks up their flame and runs, picks up their flame and runs, and doesn't care about the rest of the group. All pick them up at the same time. Even if one person types, go. And once you've done it, as you can see on the map there where we have to stand, everybody pick it up and run to the west where you can see the secret door. If everyone deposits it at the same time, great, it opens up. If people start dropping off and the flames fall off or these disappear after a short period of time because everyone else was impatient or you were impatient, you'll have to start again. So make it easy on yourself and just one bang it with coordination. Now, of course, as it took four people to bring flames, there are four people required to press the crystals. You can see one there on the right, one here on the left, one on the right further down. And of course, when you get to the very end, there's one right at the bottom. Now, simply put again, this has also taken me a very long time in pugs. Pay attention and coordinate. All press at the same time, portal opens. Don't all press at the same time. Be there forever spamming buttons wondering what's going on. Someone always complains about other people doing it wrong, and it's usually the one who's doing it wrong that's complaining. Just saying. Anyway, pick up these, look for the white crystal, deposit it in the candle holder. Job done. Really easy stuff. You've seen it all before, but this is now the third boss. So you've got two bosses to help you on boss fights now. Flame guy, you've got the lich, and now you're going to get this whirlwind spinny dude, which most tanks hate. I'm going to tell you why they hate it, because they don't understand it. Now, good job you've got me here to explain it. Activate it by looking at it once the NPC has finished their script, and keep this nice and simple. So, he will appear right there in front of us. We are again using the triangle formation behind the boss, almost, where we are standing in three different spots. What you need to do is just stand still and whack him. Now, when you get a wind aiming at a member of your group. You need to figure out who it is and they need to kite it around the room. That will be more relevant in a few moments. But the tank needs to turn us away from the group and if this happens, this spin, move. Go left or right and find an ad to stack the boss on. Simple as that. If you stand still, you are going to die. The spin will take massive chunks of health off of the tank. Health percentage based per hit. If you have corrosive armor or any other mitigating effect, it doesn't matter. You will still die. So hold him still at all times. But if he spins, pick an ad and go and put the boss on it. As you can see here, Bob is going to the left, looking for an ad if he can find one. If not, he's just going to stop where he is. Now, during the fight, if you want to deal with the ads, you can. It will make things a lot, lot easier because you don't have to deal with them. Or the tank can simply taunt them. It's up to you. But the simplest, simplest tactic here is to just hold it still and hit it. Kite the wind if you have to, and when he spins, put him on an ad. The ads have such low health anyway that while he's standing next to them, the damage on the ground from most of the DPS, even with low DPS players, will actually kill the ad. That one died there without too much effort anyway. But most tanks try to find a way to manipulate that spin. You don't need to do that. It will kill you. All you need to do is move it around the room. Now, what we've done here, obviously, for the sake of the video, is we have gone and hit a few of the ads just to get rid of them during the fight. If you do end up with more ads in the room than you should, say four or five, then, of course, the boss will be invulnerable shortly um, while you are trying to get rid of one or two. You get rid of a couple, it will go away, you can hit them again. But the fight doesn't change from there. You'll end up with two wins at most. People do need to get that away from the group, but it's rinse, repeat from here stress enough that this is not a dps race yes of course if you've got loads of deeps you will kill it quicker that's obvious there's no 
uh, rocket science involved there. But if you have low damage, it doesn't matter. The fight is not going to punish you for having low DPS by not allowing you to pass it. Take your time if you have to. Kite the wind, kill the adds, kill the boss. Or kite the winds, hit the boss, and stack it on the adds when he does a spin. As long as the tank is holding it still while it's not spinning, it will make everything a lot, lot easier. If the tank runs around the room like a loon all the time and not just when it's spinning, it's going to be a problem. Also, one more major thing for the tank, you can see, you can hear clearly rather, that I've said go left or right. Don't cut through the middle of the room. You are going to kill unaware players very, very fast. They can't take one or even two ticks of it. They'll die. Now, the only side effect of taking too long in there is that you can actually end up with two wins. We didn't, but you can. Now, this is simple. Go out to the right, and we're going to go and kill a large ad pull before the last boss. The last boss is chaotic as hell, but if you break up the mechanics individually and understand each one properly, it makes things a, a lot, lot easier. Especially if you've already picked up the secrets, because those ad bosses that will help you are invaluable they are absolutely insane make sure you use them i'm going to show you when you should but how you do that is entirely up to you i'm just going to show you the strategy that we used what you do is your choice just bear in mind those bosses by the way do give you bonuses outside of what we've already talked about add pull here by the way grab the zivkin grab the colossus turn it away from the group chain everything else in and pin it Again, be very very careful when the Colossus uh, channels because you've got big 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 lava stuff going on the floor or fire Meteors, whatever you want to call them and of course the ads you have to make sure that you maintain Some form of coordination with your group and don't run around the room like a headless chicken because if you do you're gonna die AoEs will go all over the place and of course they will start channeling from long range and it really really hurts Again, one of these little totem things Usually again on the last boss if you don't kill the portal quick enough a big big spider will come in and start channeling and buffing up the boss Again, that is the assumption that these are somehow contributing towards that But at the end of the day if you if you know what they really do or you think you know what they really do Or you just want to discuss it anyway put that in the comment section below everyone can have a bit of a giggle Essentially just kill the bloody things um when it comes to the last boss, like I mentioned, we do have extra buffs from the ad bosses, which we haven't gone over. And that is that the spinning boss, because we've got all three now, will give you increased health, of course, just for having the buff, which we didn't mention. But the spinning boss will protect the group from damage and hit enemies. And can res if you use a synergy once every minute, but the other synergies will make him do more damage. The flame one will actually give you a shield. And the lich one will give you heals. The order in which you apply them is entirely up to you. Sometimes the flame one first is quite nice. Sometimes the um, the spinner guy is quite nice. It's up to you. It really is. But just bear in mind what each one does. Shields, damage protection, and heals. Any order is up to you. Now, the boss is held in the middle of the room here on purpose. Keep them away from the edges. It, gets, it becomes messy. The heavy attacks obviously need to be blocked by the tanks. And this beam needs to be spread out and blocked or dodged if you can help it. Failing that, just big heals. And more importantly, you need to be quite far away from the boss if you can help it. Because on hard mode, you place circles on the ground. And once it has applied itself on both versions of the fight, you will actually have a rather nasty 5 or 6 second damage over time on you in the form of fire damage. Dodge roll this big boom, by the way. Or step out of it. Once the boom goes off the first time, you will get flames. Don't touch those. Move the boss away. And again, beams, spread them out. Don't overlap them. Place the fire on the ground. Carry on. That fire dot is evil. If your healer is slacking, you are going to die. So be very, very careful. That's going to be a constant mechanic in the fight. At the moment, it's only three beams. After the next phase, it will be four consistently. See again. Spread out. Find a spot. Place it. Carry on. Very, very tricky stuff. Now, at any point in time, you can bring the extra bosses in. Dodge roll or block this, by the way. Any point in time, you can bring the extra bosses in. But I would recommend bringing them in, as we just did there, quite close to around sort of 70 to 60% health. Because at 65 to 60% health, he will, depending on mechanics, spawn a portal at the back of the room. As you can see, we've gently edged the boss around the room so that we've now got our back to that part of the room. That means that when this kicks in, we are already in position. So again prioritize those scamps they will kill the group make sure you're always killing those first and hit the boss as and when there is no dps race for the boss you can take as long as you like even 5k dps you'll be fine now go to the portal at 66 to 60 percent and these do change they're random there's about four or five different ones and basically the tank needs to be able to debuff the, p the pillar 
and grab the ads. Don't worry about killing the ads in here, it's a waste of time. You are on a timer in here. You've got about a minute or so, just under actually, to kill this between you and your group. If you don't, then that big spider there is going to come into the fight. He's got about 15 million health with a big damage shield. You can't kill him and he's going to buff the boss. If you do successfully do it, then you don't deal with that mechanic. Either way, it's just an inconvenience. So get in, kill the totem, get back out again. Now, once you're out, we go into phase two. Yes, there's a big boom, get out of it. And of course, the big winds that you can see there, which spawn when he puts his swords into the ground, those go around the room for the rest of the fight. Spread out, drop your AoE, come back in, get heals. We've introduced an ad, obviously, to help us because there's a bloody great spider in the room. That happens only on stage two and three. This mechanic here, you can see a big orange circle on the ground. The tank needs to stand in that and block it, otherwise the group goes boom. So, while everything looks really, really chaotic right now, the mechanics are basically the same. You've got the big heavy attack from the boss the tank needs to block. You've got the big boom that you can block or dodge roll from. And you've also got the beams that you need to spread out, block, come back in again. Don't stack them on the boss. Too much fire on the floor is bad. However, you must kill that spider. It is a priority. And now you must kind of hover around the middle of the room as much as you can because the big winds that go around in circles over and over are going to stay. The small ones you can weave in and out of. The big ones you need to find the one gap that there is. As you can see, it's now coming around again. No matter what mechanic we're on, you've got to keep your eyes on that. Here it comes. Gap in the middle. Just go round it. Nice and simple. This big boom, block it or dodge it. Or if you are feeling really, really unsure of yourself and you can still maintain heals, obviously, as a group because you might have other stuff on you, you can just step out of the big boom and you'll be fine. Again, never overlap this mechanic. That is dead. As you saw there, got overlapped. One person died. Do not do that. It's really, really, really risky. You can make it very difficult for yourself for no good reason. Be careful. You do not have room, really, for a lot of reses, so that's why the, uh, the extra ads coming in really, really help. But again, the spider that comes in on phase two and phase three, you really want to make sure you've got that ad for that. If you can really, really save it for that, it will help a lot. They only have about 2.5 million health, but they hit like a freaking steam train. They are so aggressive, the tank is going to struggle. While trying to hold on to the boss, while trying to dodge the winds, while trying to make sure the beam doesn't kill them, and all the rest of the stuff, while maintaining aggro on the scamps and all the rest, gotta hold that spider if it hits the dps they're dead again spread out block drop that fire on the ground if you have to move the boss you have to move the boss it's just part of the fight you don't want to be clustered up in too much fire on the ground again once his health goes down to around 35 to 30 percent we will have to go into the portal for a second time all the mechanics in the fight now do not change they're all the same we're in the dark kill the totem tank grabs the ads happy days if you kill it quick enough brilliant if you don't kill it quick enough then the boss is going to get slightly buffed with some resistances and all that nasty stuff so it's not stressful if you don't manage to do this you can still go through the portal and carry on with the fight bear in mind by the way if you die outside the portal the portal will bring you in if you die inside the portal the portal will bring you into the fight again unless someone reses you if you don't make it to the portal quick enough you will die because you take serious damage over time on the run there so keep your heels up now we don't really need to explain all these mechanics again, but we will, obviously, for the sake of the people who are really confused at all this chaos. This is the same as the last phase. You've got scamps, get rid of them. You've got a spider, get rid of it. You've got beams, make sure that you spread out and block or dodge roll and at least get in the heels nice and quick. Stay in the middle when the big wind wall comes around and the big, big boom, make sure you block or dodge roll. Apart from that, watch your feet. And that's pretty much it. You want to bring your ad in to help get rid of that spider because it really helps. The lich helps massively to get rid of scamps because it can put out big lich crystals under the ground. So that's also quite a benefit at um, the last phase. Whichever um, extra boss that helps you, you find more beneficial at the end of the fight, try to save that one. Because that will make the difference between you passing and failing. This phase here, you haven't now being introduced to anything you haven't already seen everything is the same so if you could do phase two then you can kill the fight you can do it it's exactly the same just don't panic because the boss's health is low it's not going to change anything there's no um dps race at all if you can kill that spider if you can kill the scamps it's just you and the boss wiggle your feet hit the boss wiggle your feet hit the boss keep up the big heels you will be fine even if you have 5 to 10k DPS while the boss is the only thing left in the room, 
it really doesn't matter because he will not wipe the group just because you don't have high deeps. Not to mention, of course, the adds do bring DPS to the group, so half of that is covered anyway. Do not stack that beam. Even when you try to move away from someone, it can be really tricky because some people don't pay attention to people's reactions. Their body language can't be read very well. If you're not on comms, try to stand somewhere out in the field on your own and don't overlap. Spread out, coordinate, be very, very careful. This is rinse, repeat. Mind the fire, block the big boom, kill the scamps, hit the boss. Stay in the middle when the wall comes round, block the beam, get in when you need to heal. This mechanic here is crucial. That, if it's not blocked by the tank, the big orange circle, will kill the group, and that can happen at the same time as the spider is in the room, and it can make the difference between winning and losing. You do have to make sure that one is done. This will take a bit of practice, but don't forget to use those buffed secret ads. They really, really help. So hopefully that helped, hopefully that wasn't too boring, hopefully you now have a better understanding of the mechanics in this particular dungeon, especially how important the secrets are, and yes, of course, you can still get speedrun no dev hard mode with the secrets if you pace yourself and don't hang around too long. Everything is doable with the secrets, but if you don't want them, then it's entirely up to you. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hugely appreciate the support. If you are not subscribing already on YouTube, of course, do hit those buttons. They are free. 72,000 people have downloaded the add-on and 65,000 people are following. Get those followers in, people. Thank you very much. Now, of course, if you want to help support outside the channel, there are some links in the info section for Patreon, Twitter, Facebook, the website zonagaming.com, Instagram, and there's some other stuff there if you fancy it. Thank you for watching again, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.